Hey guys, how's it going? Master Bucks here. Welcome to another episode of the Arsenal Career Mode. We are only about two weeks away from the January transfer window, which I can't wait for. We haven't made any signings out of the January transfer window, so there won't be any players immediately joining us on the 1st of January, but I might look to change that because I am looking to make a few signings. Since, you know, I haven't actually utilized this new feature in career mode yet, I did want to kind of do it, and I was looking at making uh, two special signings. One position I was looking to sign was a goalkeeper. Now, obviously, we have Petr Cech, who has already started going down in his overall. He's like 35 years of age, so eventually we would probably replace him with how long we're going to do the series for. So, I'm thinking I was probably going to pick up a nice, highly rated, but probably not starting 11 quality keeper just yet, and eventually bring them into the team when they surpass check. So far, I've got five options. We've got Fructil here, we've got Lafont, we've got Donnarumma, we've got Ruli, and we've got Jack Butlin. Now, I'm good for either of those goalkeepers, whoever we can get and whoever we can get for the best deal. But at the same time, I don't want to buy or go for any of these players just yet, because as you can see, I've only just put them in the shortlist. I don't really have any information on them, and so I'm just going to hold off for now. And the other signing I'm going to make is going to be for a centre-back, and it won't be one of these star, uh, really good centre-backs that we've got at the moment, like Jonathan Tarr, Van Dijk, or Brooks. It's just going to be another younger centre-back to hopefully come up through the ranks, and a player that, for the first time ever, I'm going to trigger a release clause for. Dayot Upamecano. As you can see, I've got quite a fair few Bundesliga centre-backs, and that's just by coincidence. I just think they have a lot of good centre-backs. But either way, moving on, though, we are going to go to sign him, buying him for his release clause, and I could save half a million or even a million or something like that, but I'm not even going to bother. The release clause is literally only a million over his value, or a million and two if you want to be if you want to be specific. But whatever, man. I just want to approach to buy him immediately. And yes, I will pay. And look, immediately it says right there that's the only option that we've got since they don't want to negotiate. So yep, skip the negotiations, and we'll just go and buy the player immediately. So they're going to start off with wanting a prospect squad role, which to be honest, I'm perfectly fine with, and I'll give that to him. Next up, we're the ones that get to set what the what the contract length is going to be. I want five years every single time. And they are going to accept the five years. Uh, very good. They don't want a release clause. And I'm probably not going to go for a release clause either since he's a player that, I mean, unless I could set a ridiculously high release clause, but I don't really want to. So yes, we will accept that. No release clause. And now we get onto the wage. They're after a fair increase too. Nearly double the current wage that he's on, plus a half a million dollar signing bonus. Pretty harsh here. You can keep the 500 grand signing bonus, but we're bumping it down to 25 grand worth of wage. Let's see if they go for it. Hopefully they do. And we are right back where we started again. All right, sweet. The exact same wage and the exact same signing bonus. Let's try this again then. We're getting rid of the 9 million and we'll just make it 30. We'll still keep the signing bonus. That's not going to work. We came here hoping to finalize this transfer, but Revar, you're a fucking cheap ass cunt you are. You are up. You're kidding me. You're going to walk out over nine grand a little extra, nine grand a week. You're joking. Okay, that's pretty annoying, but thankfully it's not totally the end of the deal. We can still renegotiate in a week's time if I want to acquire the player. Good. I was going to say, that is a bit ridiculous. The fact that he's walked out over, okay, they've hit us with 39 when he's getting paid like less than 20, and I'm like, oh, how about 30? And they walk out the room, mate, I'm still giving you half a million worth of a signing bonus. That, oh, I fucking hate that. I hate that agent. What a prick. And for the first game today against Southampton, I've rotated, some will say unnecessarily, but we've got Liverpool in a few days, and I'm going to play that game, and I want to have a nice fit team for it. So I've rotated here, not too much, but as much as I pretty much see fit. Like, Murdersack is in, Hakimi is in, we've got Kazola in for Ramsey, we've got Welbeck in up front for, uh, for Lacazette, because I haven't really played that much with Welbeck. If I've played with any other striker apart from Lacazette, it's normally been Giroud, and only on the very off occasion. Welbeck's barely featured, and I do want to give him a run, and yeah, that's pretty much that. So, we'll see how we go in this game. And Southampton seem to be playing a relatively familiar 4-2-3-1 formation with a pretty similar lineup, although Van Dijk is on the bench. And here we go. Kicked off first game of the episode. Let's go for a good one. I'm never really able to find the pass at the moment. Pulisic with a bit of space. He's going to cover him, though. Back to him. Pulisic, recover! Oh, the ball was right there. I don't know what animation that was. Why was he sticking his leg out to the left when the ball was to the right of him? God knows. Every time I move the ball forward, no one's really threatening. No one's making that run in from behind, or maybe that might change. Oh, Stevens gets a little something on the through ball over the top to Sanchez. He stops what was nearly the best goal-scoring opportunity today. Great ball up the middle. What is this marking? And that is going to be a free kick because he goes down. Mustafi tries to body him and get in the way. Instead, he just gets contact and falls over like a bitch. Fucking hell, but it's worked for him. Look, like, 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 let's see this. He's just a strong, 
hip and shoulder in the back and it's just toppled him over a bit too strong from Mustafi. That's a very annoying, oh, it's a very annoying penalty to give away. Petacek, we talked about signing a goalkeeper. Do we need one? Maybe not. Check. Gets rid of a Pulisic and we've got away with that one. Just trying my best right now, Southampton. It's annoying, but I have to give him credit because they are doing a good job here, but he might be offside. Sanchez just doesn't even take a touch, and then he gets fly tackled from behind. No no penalty for that one. What the fuck happened right toward the end there? Has Sanchez just completely fucked it or what? Barely taken a shot so far in this game. It's really, really a bit of a struggle. And I'll tell you what, though. This is beautiful. Look at all the space that Alexis Sanchez has been given here. Crossed in. Well back. Changes players at the, like the last second. Pulisic actually pulled off an amazing shot, but an amazing save by Forster. And Giroud just recently subbed on. This is your moment, son. Your moment. Kolasinac! Oh, the save was made by Forster again. We are now getting a bit unlucky. We should have scored a few. What is that effort? And now they're through. Gabbiadini and Chambers recently subbed on does a job. Oh, an amazing ball. Try to cut it off before he could pass it. Didn't happen. Hakimi, cut back. Lamina, you just got out the fucking way. And then look at that bounce. You're kidding me. Oh, that was always going to be the result too. Look at where it's fucking ended up. First off, I'm trying to get back with Hakimi. I then try to cover with who's in that number 21. I think that's Chambers. He moves out the fucking way before I take control of him. And then the bounce after the save. How kindly can that fall toward Prowse? There's a lot of fucking suspect action that happened in the lead up to that. Fuck off. Come on. How much can it go one team's way? To lead to a goal. It's bullshit. Bullshit. I look up. I look up. I just... Oh, Ozil. Kazola. 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 Kazola! Oh, my! It's just not my day. It's not my day. Don't worry. I was never going to win this game. If this shit's fucking happening. Giroud. And that's just not even anywhere close to being on target. Jeez, i got nothing to pass to. I'm getting hunted down here. Will shit. I still don't have many plays. No one's running forward with any fucking... Yeah, because all it's just standard fucking still like, oh, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if we lose 1-0. I'm not even going to bother running forward here. Took too long to move the ball forward. The referee's like, nah, see you later. Was never winning this game. Nah, fuck off with some of the shit that happened off the ball and some of the fucking fouls and just all the other crap that happened today. If that goal from Kazola, if it had hit the post and gone in, oh, sure, yeah, nah, that's what I would have expected to happen. But no, it had to hit the post and just so cruelly go along the goal face. I knew that that was just the fucking... It was the cherry on top of what was a fucking bullshit game. Well, I sacrificed three points there against Southampton with not playing a very good side, with playing a very rotated team. Now I go into the Liverpool game with what is going to hopefully be a nice, good-to-go team, all fully fit, ready to go starting 11. But there may still be some tired players in there either way. I'm also going to train up uh, the players that we've got here. We've got Bellerin. I think I might still keep going on with these drills just until we get to January, and then I'll change them up for sure. Been a frustrating start to the episode. Not only that loss, but that absolute cunt of an agent that represents fucking Dayot uh, Upa Meccano or whatever his name is. It's just been fucked. Thankfully, we get a little bit of good news. A player's just come back from injury, and it is Laurent Koscielny. Although it's probably a bit too soon to bring him back into the game, so we're probably still going to have to roll with another centre-back. And bloody Callum Chambers was good for a while there anyway, so I reckon we might start him instead of Mertesacker. And as you can see, I mean, you can clearly see why I tried to rotate as much as possible, because guys like... Ozil, Sanchez to an extent. I mean, just changes that had to be made. and There are definitely going to be players I'll need to take off, including Ozil. So we will see how things go. But the back four seems quite decent. Chambers, even though he's 78 rated and stands out a fair bit, has been okay in the last few games. Stood up, done well. And Walcott is the one change, really, that I've had to make, apart from Chambers due to injury. Walcott is in for Pulisic, who was just way too tired to continue. Now let's see, in what's probably going to be the biggest game in this episode, Arsenal versus Liverpool. We're going out there with a pretty strong starting eleven. Not exactly a super well-rested starting eleven, but we did just have the other Premier League game a few days ago, and most of these players did play. Despite that, we're playing a much stronger starting eleven, regardless of stamina, in this game. So hopefully it will be a little bit better. Chambers is running and running and running and has space. Chambers against his old side. He can't surely. He can't surely. Blocked by Chambers again. Even though he's the lowest rated defender, he's the one that stood up early. Like this. Liking this a lot. I'm going to see if I can just... No, I tried to take it all the way past him. It didn't exactly happen for it. But Shaka! What a shot! Oh, Shaka! What a goal! A screamer! Top right-hand corner. And we have our first goal of the game. I don't know if this is from outside the box. I thought I'd be able to take on... Ramsey here on uh, Claban, that is. And just the little Swaz Tech is in the top right-hand corner. This is some sort of shot from Shaka. 
whether it's unintentional or just a really, I, I don't know. I'm not even going to knock the goal because it's a screamer. Oh, you're kidding. No, no. Coutinho. Save. Check. Oh, they tried it. They fucking tried it for the save to go right back to them. But no, nah, not this time. Get there first. Three minutes of stoppage time. There should be enough time for us to go again here. There should be. Although, to be said, that's a great ball oh, from Ozil. I shouldn't have taken the bridge kick with bloody Ozil. Terrible. Robinson ran onto it. He's much quicker than Ozil. Plus, he was already ahead of him in that regard anyway. Whatever. 1-0. And it's only Shaka's amazing goal that separates the two teams. The camera's dead. Watch this be the instance where Ramsey goes through. Oh, very sharp turn. Oh, it still goes in anyway. Gomez had deflected off him and ended up in the top corner. Ramsey's touch as he was going to line up for goal was literally so heavy that it actually allowed Gomez to block it. Watch this one here. Jesus. Thankfully, the shot got deflected and still ended up in. You're leaving the keeper, I think, Karius, with absolutely no chance to stop that one there. Very unfortunate for Liverpool, but they're 2-0 down. I tell you what, Liverpool quite recently against Newcastle suffered a pretty wicked deflected goal. They might get another. Lacazette, it's three. How is this game three nil? I can't quite believe it because he's been sensational. It's I, Liverpool as well. I mean, like they haven't been playing that badly. Three nil though. Lacazette, I mean, has been good today, but just hasn't really had the chance to score. Finally, with a brilliant volley. Oh, it just worked out a little too well right up until the end there. Ramsey's shot, just getting scuffed wide. And Oxlade-Chamberlain coming off. He's once again had a very disappointing return. How does he start over Mo Salah club? What are you on? Uh, oh, Alexander-Arnold, I thought he got substituted. No, it was somebody else, apparently. They've still got the ball, you know. Bellerin trying to stay in front. Doing about as good a job as possible. And Mo Salah. You knew the save would go right back to a Liverpool player. You already fucking knew. But the finish was no good. Would Oxlade Chamberlain have scored that? I'm not saying anything. And surely that's it. 3-0. Had chances to make it 4. Definitely were several chances for Liverpool to get back into the game and to finally uh, let us lose our clean sheet. But it did not happen. Liverpool's woes will continue on into FIFA 18. It has been a monster game from Arsenal. However, that being said, 3-0 when we first went 3-0 up didn't exactly feel like a 3-0, if you know what I mean. I, I definitely thought we were the better team, but I think the scoreline is definitely flattering. So we lose 1-0 to Southampton away on a bit of a rotated side, but a little bit better of a rotated and well-rested team, but with a Pretty much starting 11, we take it to Liverpool and win at home against a harder side on paper. It's weird. I, I'm trying to figure out and compute the maths. It just doesn't work out for me. But whatever. The next game, though, against Palace, I assume it's away. I'm probably going to sim the next two games to get to January. I am also going to, at some point, return back to that absolute asshole of an agent of Deota Upamecano and will hopefully sign him up again. Lacazette's goal against Liverpool, too, by the way, puts him top of everyone else when it comes to the Golden Boot race. Ozil's underneath him on nine goals, so those two have definitely been working out pretty well, although Ozil's goals recently have dried up a bit. Let's face it, he had a very hot start to the season, and yeah, anyway, moving on. It's a good thing I'm simming this Crystal Palace game, even if it is away, because they are five at the back. I hate that formation, and I hate how the fuck we have managed to lose this game 1-0 again. Every away game so far this episode, doesn't matter if I've played it or simmed it, a 1-0 loss, and against Palace for all people. Is that their first goal for the season? It wouldn't fucking surprise me. I didn't even play my, like, second best team or my rotation team. I was going to play my rotation team for West Bromwich Albion because it'd be a home game and I'd have to rest for the next game that I would play. No, instead I lose the fucking, ah, oh, Crystal Palace game. You're mental. Anyway, let's try this again. Once again, I'm going to renegotiate with the player. Yes, pay and skip club negotiations and we'll get right into the contract talks. And hopefully this time, the agent is a little bit less of a dickhead. He wants five years? Okay, sweet. No worries. We'll give him the five years. We'll disregard a release clause this time, and the wage and the signing bonus is literally the exact same. I'm... Do I even go... I'm not going to counter off for the 30 grand this time. I'm just going to maybe bump it up a little bit. I still don't want to pay like 30... Well, I'm, I'm happy with 35 and then the signing bonus. How about it? Come on. If you cannot be negotiated with at all, I swear to God, you're meant to be an agent. Surely... They'll be fine with that. It's a tough deal for me, but I mean, in the end, we've got the cash. You're fucking joking me. Part of me wants to go 37 and a half grand a week because like, I just want to stick it to the fucking agent. I know that they'll probably fuck the deal up for us, but I suppose I've got no choice. How about this? 
Oh, do I even want to do it? I want to get rid of his signing bonus. I just want to fuck this. Oh, this dickhead. Look, I'll be honest. I, I need a little win here. I need a fucking... I need I need anything. I need a little win. You got to give me something. You got to give me fucking something here, mate. I swear to God. I swear to... I want to fucking drop kick this fucking prick. I just want to... I want to fucking... I just want to smash this bloke. I really do. I need the littlest of wins here. You are... If you fuck... I swear to fucking God, mate. I swear to fucking God. Do it, please do it, please do it. Show your true colors, mate. Show them. Show your true colors. It's not quite what my client... Yeah, motherfucker! That's what I'm talking about! Yeah, you're gonna take the minus 10 bucks on your fucking signing bonus, you prick. Yeah, suck this. That's what I'm on. That's what I'm fucking on about, yeah? Yeah, on my terms, bitch. On my terms. So, Upa Makana will join Arsenal at the beginning of the January transfer window in two days. That's what I'm on about. That is what I'm fucking talking about. We stuck to that agent, didn't we? We got the best deal for that player possible. And now we simulate the game with the second team, the game that I thought if any of the two that we would sim, I'd end up dropping points for, it'd be this one, because it'd be another away game and with a rotated team. But obviously for this game, I played the rotation side since Chelsea is the next game coming up. Skipping ahead and a 2-0 win. That time it's much, much better. All right then. So we'll hit advance. We will be treated to a whole bunch of new monthly scouting updates. And we will also have, hopefully, Dayot Upamecano joining us immediately, if all goes well. I'm sure it will, but this is the first time I'm doing it ever in career mode. Signing a player out of a transfer window and then joining us at the newest one. So let's see. We start off with nine emails. It's taken a fair time to load up. Hell, it's more than nine emails. This is mental stuff right now. I see Ericsson is now level with Lacazette for goals. And we've got a whole bunch of players now out on loan. A pre-contract player arrival. I was not aware of this. Hang on a minute. All right, let's start going through these. Monthly scouting update. All right, cool. Pl pray, uh, what am I talking about? Oh, right. That's... Okay, cool. Yeah, no, that is the player. When I, I see pre-contract player arrival. <laughs> oh, my God. I look sick. All right. When I see pre-contract player arrival, I think of a player that I got on a pre-contract in January, not a player that I actually paid a transfer fee for out of the window. Okay, so it's all the same then. We've got one player that has over 70 max, and he's got a great potential too. I don't need to see any more here. What's his value? 400 grand? Like the look of it. What is it? Justice Meyer. Oh, we'll bring him in. Let's go. So we make it to the January transfer window. As you can see, we've already made one signing here, and it conveniently goes away right as I start to talk about it. But Upa Makano, who is now in the Arsenal side, beautiful stuff on the pre-contract. And now, this game against Chelsea, I might put it off for the beginning in the next episode, but we're not going to end it just quite yet because I do want to go for one of those goalkeepers. Now, the player I want to go for the most is Donnarumma because I thought initially maybe we could get a good deal for him, him being in the last six months of his contract. But with that being said, he does, like, he is now one of their most crucial players, so I doubt we'd be able to get a super good deal for him. Plus, he's only 18, can't get him on a pre-contract. So what I might do is just throw an offer in. It's probably not going to be a very good offer, and Milan will probably just reject it straight away. But I'm going to negotiate for Donnarumma. I imagine it's probably going to be so insulting to their rep or to the manager that he's probably just going to end up walking out completely, but... I'm going to try my best anyway. I'm literally starting it off with a $30 million offer. As a matter of fact, I wonder how much Petr Cech is. He's only worth 14. Okay, no, I'm not going to hit him with, it, with, it, with an offer that's insulting. Let's just begin with a transfer fee of literally 30 million. That is 9 mil less than his current value. So that would be insane to get a player that good, that young, for that cheap. In the last six months of his contract, we are testing to see how far we can stretch this. So... Let's see. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. We won't, you know, we won't exactly, uh, <clears throat> we won't exactly, like, I can live it down, that's for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if they just walk out the door. No, they don't walk out the door, but we do get hit with a pretty tough counter offer here. 20, or should I say 58 million and 300 grand, and then a 15% sell-on clause. That's pretty steep. Well, first things first, I'm not going to give you 15%. I'm always going to go 5% if someone counters with a sell-on clause. And I'm proposing a new transfer fee. And again, I did not plan on paying. I wanted to get a good deal for this guy. So I'm not going to go any higher than 40 million. That is what his current value is, or a little over what his current value is. So we'll see. I imagine... I imagine he's probably going to counter offer again with literally the exact same thing that he initially offered or initially countered with. But still, that's what I'm going to go with. Be shocked if they accept that, but I'll be very happy if they do. Let's see. No, literally, this is a bit ridiculous. As a matter of fact, they've actually increased the fucking transfer sum. They don't even bother trying to compensate. It's like, it's literally just, it's literally, I, I, what they should do in that situation is just, instead of saying, hmm, 
Now, how about this for another counteroffer? They should just say, nah, go fuck yourself. He just got a hundred grand more expensive. That's what they should say. You know what? Get fucked. Get fucked, Khan. I, you know what? I brought you all the way over here from Italy because I thought that we'd be able to do business. But nah, get on the next plane out of here, you fucking pleb. You can get stuff. There's no way that I was going to pay that much for Donnarumma. Plus, on top of that, I've got so many other keepers to take my pick from. And some actually like the look of a little more than Donnarumma. I know on paper, Donnarumma is probably the better. But meh, stuff it. I don't care. So you know what? Get out of here with that shit. As a matter of fact, I've just discovered another goalkeeper that wasn't even originally in my shortlist, and it's Kepa Ariza Balaga. In the last six months of his contract, he is 23, the youngest age possible that you can sign a player on for. So I want to shortlist him, and I could just get him for free, have check, you know, just continue to be my goalkeeper for the last six months of the season. And at the beginning of the new season, those two can vie for the starting goalkeeper spot. And I'll just get him, I'll just get him for free. It's beautiful. But that will do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And the next episode of the Arsenal Career Mode will hopefully be coming out very soon. It'll be a big one. Chelsea coming up, obviously the first game in the next episode, plus all those new signings that we'll be making, and of course players leaving, it'll be awesome. Until that video, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a good one.